good morning. It is 6.41 and I'm on my way to Glasgow again for my course. Woohoo! You've got to love the early morning starts. You've got to love them. No, you really don't. You really, really don't. The only benefit to an early morning start is that the roads are relatively clear up. That's literally it. idiots on the road, you know, the ones who want to cut you up, especially on roundabouts, you know, you're on the, uh, you're on the inside lane going right, someone's going straight off, they love just to cut in front of your nose, don't they, absolutely love it, why, I literally have no idea, maybe it's just because they can't drive and they got their license off the back of their uh, morning cereal box, I don't know, That's my two pence on that. Today I'm not going down the coal road. It has scared me enough. You hear that coal road? You've won. I do not like it, so I'm just going to go through Dunfermline. It's much more preferable. Yes, it takes a few minutes extra, but it's just the coal road. Ugh, I don't like it. it. Just, especially with the weather we've had the last few days, it's a nightmare. Water hammering, 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 hammering. Not fun. Today it's uh, still overcast, but actually not raining. There's still massive puddles everywhere, as I just saw, but it's, it's dry ish, so it's better. So, anyway, uh, today's little tale of woe, perhaps. Uh, as you may or may not know, I'm a marine engineer, so I've seen some pretty interesting things during my time at sea. Um, my most recent time at sea was actually um, over the last Christmas winter time. So it's obviously it was in it was off the British coast. It was very so obviously the, you know the water around Britain. A winter is pretty chilly, and uh, one of my jobs at the time was to clean uh, seawater suction strainers. So you know most a lot of parts on a well not a lot of parts but on a ship you have like cooling for various machinery and usually that can be fresh water. But that fresh water has to go through like a heat exchanger and what cools the fresh water in the heat exchanger is seawater. So I'm cleaning out a, so I have to clean out a seawater suction strainer actually for a fire pump in this occasion. So the actual, because when you're on a ship, you know, and a smoke detector goes off of that, you know, you can't expect to see the little red truck bob over 10 miles of water to get to you. No. You know, you have to fight the fire yourself. And I have actually done firefighting courses and they are not entirely pleasant, I will tell you that. And I can tell you about that another time if you so wish. Um, I've also done sea survival courses as well. Again, not entirely pleasant something I can talk about in the future perhaps so yeah you know we have a like a fire main where it's constantly pressurized by pumps so that's how we can fight the fire and uh, so this seawater strainer is in the most awful compartment I mean just to get to this strainer I have to climb down like three ladders three um, in right in the bowels of the ship failed your driving test because you pulled out in front of me and made me slow down. Good job. Anyway, um, so I'm in, I'm in a god awful compartment and not only do I have to climb down three ladders just to get to it, I then have to so I clamber down another little, little awkward ladder, stand straddling a pipe, which is cold, so unfortunately I'm getting cold in a place I'd rather not be cold. 
course, it's all very unpleasant. And uh, I've isolated the system, so there's hydraulic valves, I've shut them, locked them off. I've shut manual valves, so all the water that's left in the system is just what's in the pipes. And uh, so, you know, it's not pressurized or anything like that, so if I open up, it's not gonna go boom, and explode everywhere, theoretically at least. So I, there's, these strainers used to have a little plug on top of them, and this one was pretty sea solid, so yeah, it took a lot of effort just to get the, get the thing off. And then I have to just like very, very carefully move the plug, because for some reason, whoever designed this particular system thought it would be a good idea to have like an isolating valve about 15 feet above your head. So you've got a whole bunch of pipe work which is filled with water, which actually does act as like to pressurize it. So I'm thinking, oh, this is gonna be fun. So I'm very carefully, very, 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 very carefully removing this plug. Um, and I get to the point where it's like on its very couple of last threads, you can see water, you can see water starting to like form around the, uh, around the edges of the thread and I'm like okay yeah here we go and I'm thinking you yeah, know maybe a couple more turns and I'll have this thing out and it'll maybe bubble over a bit while I'm when then I can inspect it and see if it actually does need removal and clean so I get to the point where I think you know a couple more threads and then poof, the thing pretty much explodes you know water comes shooting out of this orifice the, I don't know how it is but the plug's still in my hand my hand goes shooting up, bangs off the pipe above it, and I'm, I, I just get, immediately get drenched with very, very cold water. And um, I'm trying not to swallow half of it, and it's just still spraying out everywhere, and I'm freezed, freezing by this point. And I'm like, <laughs> trying to, I've still got the plug in my hand, I'm trying to get the plug back in, I'm really starting to panic, thinking, oh my god, this thing's not going in. And, Oh, it was horrible and I'm just eventually I get the plug back in and I am drenched drenched in really cold water and I've still got to go up these three ladders and then pretty much the full length of the ship just to get back to my cabin get changed and get warm again so yay I was a happy bunny it wasn't that pleasant at all Anyway, that was that one. But yeah, I've been on a few ships now, obviously with my work. And one of the other ships, well, my first ship I've been on was actually a very old ship from when I was a cadet. And that was that was a fun trip. It really was. And we went to some you know, very nice places. Um, it was all over the Mediterranean. And uh, there was this, uh, well, we, were, we weren't best of friends, certainly at the beginning of the trip, myself and Alistair, but by the end of the trip, we were you know, pretty, we were really good friends, and still, I still can consider him a close friend to this day, Alistair, so, yeah, he's a really, really good guy, really good guy, at the time he wasn't, he was a dick, but now, yeah, really good guy, so, we go into various various shenanigans on that trip that was uh, pretty interesting uh, you have to share a cabin as well, well you initially had to share a cabin and yeah, these um, these cabins you've got like, you know, like almost like a bunk bed arrangement it's quite a thin cabin and uh, he's on the bottom bunk I'm on the top bunk and uh, the bottom bunk has a tendency to sort of like flip up if you lie in the wrong place and um, well myself and another one of the cadets at the time decided to take advantage of this fact because and poor Alistair he's cabbaged in his bunk you know he's got the curtains to join anything I'm already up I'm dressed I'm good to go because we were given the day off to go ashore in Naples Italy and so we can have a little look around we ended up going around Pompeii um, 
one which I thought was bitterly disappointing by the way. No offence Pompeii, I just didn't like it. I actually wish I'd have, we'd have gone on Vesuvius because the, um, the station you get off at to go to Pompeii is like pretty much the station you get off at to go up Vesuvius because it's actually a little like a train type thing you can take up to the crater and go around Vesuvius and I wish I'd done that I really do the view would have been incredible but now we went around Pompeii and it was disappointing it really was anyway so we we're standing there and we're like is he up yet he's meant to be coming with us isn't he yeah he's, he is coming with us okay let's get him up all right how are we gonna do that easy so we, we um, grab the edge of his bed and tip it up into its couch form. So there's Alistair. He's now pressed against the, uh, the wall or the bulkhead. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, uh, help, what's happened? Needless to say, he was awake, albeit sandwiched in an uncomfortable place because there is actually a gap where he could fall down as well. So yeah, that was that. Uh, yeah, sorry, Alistair. We had to get you out of bed somehow. Um, and there was another time as well when I'm literally just on my top bunk, and Alistair's. I think we we both had time off at this time, and I don't know what he was doing. I was just like watching DVDs and out my laptop, and uh, I don't know how he managed it, but he managed to tip up his bed again. So again, as you hear the thud, ah, uh, Ryan, help! So I stick my head over the side and I'm, I can see a couch. I'm thinking, oh dear. So it's a case of leaning over and just pressing down on his bed again so he can get out. Poor Alistair. Poor, poor Alistair. Anyway. Fun times you have at sea. Um, yeah, there was... When he moved out of his cabin, uh, there was this one time when I... I do not know why he did it, but he just, it was like being back in primary school where it, it was like playing chappy on your door or something like that and running away. Only in this case, you know, you ran away across, literally just across the hall because his cabin was just across the hall from mine. And he would just knock on the door, run away, back into his cabin and giggle like a little girl. I'm going to say giggle like a little girl. I didn't hear him giggling, but I'm going to say giggle like a little girl to make me feel better. So this went on a couple of times. I'm thinking, right, I'm going to get you back. So another time I open my door, his door's just closing and he's sitting there on his bed giggling like a little schoolgirl. Ah. So I think, okay, I'm going to get you. So I walk back, I casually walk back across the hall, open it and shut my door, sneak back as quietly as I can and just stand outside his door without making a sound. And then he's thinking the coast is clear I'm going to unlock my door, open my door, I'm going to go chap on his door again. So I hear his door unlock, he starts to open it. Now, I'm a fairly big lad, you know, at this point I was around about the 14 stone mark, so I just shove my shoulder into the door as it's partially open, and it whacks him in the face. <laughs> so needless to say, I just hear it, <gasps> thud, thud, thud. And I open the door, he's on the floor. He eventually gets up and climbs back into his bunk, feeling very sorry for himself. So I'm thinking, ha ha, got ya. Yeah, I don't think he did it again for the rest of the trip. So yeah, I think that was a score one for me there. But you know, that's one of the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems I have personally with working on a ship uh, as a marine engineer, the environments you're in are always really, really just noisy. Loads of background noise, various machinery going off, etc. It's just a really noisy environment. And um, so it means that everybody can literally be a ninja. Yeah, seriously, everybody can be a ninja. You know, ship ninjas. Because um, you can be sitting there, working away, you've got your back to the compartment. You can be sitting there working away, and um, you know, you go, oh, need this tool. 
So you go to stand up and there's somebody right there. You go, oh, jeez. And you pretty much fall over. You're picking yourself up from the bilge space. You're covered in oil and things like that. Oh, your heart's racing. And this person's standing there going, hi, what are you doing? You're like, uh, I'm recovering from a heart attack. Yeah, it's just, oh, everybody can be a ninja on a ship because it's just so difficult to tell if someone's sneaking up behind you. Um, and yeah, oh, it's hard, but the amount of times you've just been, I've just been working away and then somebody's appeared like right there and you're like, oh, help. <laughs> it's not fun. Ship ninjas, beware, they're everywhere. I told you, I told in, my, in the um, vlog yesterday that I need to put post-it notes everywhere so I can you know, think, oh wait, that's a, yeah, that's a really good thing to talk about. Yeah, no post-it notes, no idea. So I just keep talking about, you know, the ships I've been on, things like that. Or in this case, you know, things that have happened on ships. So it can be very, very unpleasant at times. I mean, my last ship, we were um, off the coast and it was fairly bad weather. I mean, there was water crashing over the bow of the ship. I mean, we were on a, we were on a tanker. There was water crashing over the bow of the ship and you could feel the ship go, you know, pitching and rolling and things like that. And uh, we just sat down for dinner. The ship's rolling a bit. And it's getting to the point where we're literally eating dinner with one hand and we've got our hand on our glass with the other to save it going flying. And we're thinking, hey, this is quite fun. Hey, wee, wee, wee. Swaying back and forth. But then it gets to the point where it starts swaying a little bit more and you're like, oh God. And it literally got to the point where my chair nearly tipped over. So I'm sitting like, oh, oh God, oh God, oh God. So I try to lean over to stop my chair going over. And, uh, and then you're holding onto your plate by this point as well, because your plate's about to go flying. There's like a little scullery area just off the dining room, and there's plates crashing in there, and you're like, oh boy, yeah, this isn't fun anymore. There's an alarm going off and things like that, yeah. Um, that was just not fun. And when you sort of go to try and sleep at night, um, because like my cabin was sort of parallel with the ship, the length of the ship, so as the ship rolled, I would roll. So you're literally sleeping in, thankfully it was a double bed, um, sleeping in the bed and you're like sideways, you know, your head in one corner and your feet in the other opposite corner, just so you don't roll out of bed. Ugh. Not fun. Not fun at all. But yeah, that's just life at sea for you. things I wanted to talk about, where I just literally can't remember them. But anyway, we'll go back to, this is going to be a very shippy, I said P, we have a P there, shippy, please do not call it the other word, which sounds like shippy, because I hope it's not that bad at least. So anyway, uh, this is the, the ship, the shippy vlog, and um, that's another thing, when you're in an engine room, Yes, there's already a lot of background noise and things, but every now and again a piece of equipment starts up and it makes an even louder noise and scares the living bejesus out of you. I mean, you could be looking at something very carefully, trying to get like a pressure or a temperature or whatever, and then you'll jump up, hoping you haven't just followed through. You're like, ooh! Uh, the worst one for this was like uh, an air compressor because it starts off and it just immediately goes and you're like oh god what's that or it can it can be running but then it unloads so it also opens up a valve and a massive pressure of air just shoots out of like a, a waistline we'll say and it's oh especially when you're standing right beside the um the end of that waistline and like a massive jet of air comes out and you're like, oh god, wasn't expecting that. Or, oh, it is that. Or another time when, so like, you can sit there in like a main generator room and then it's like an oxygen generator room. And I mean, 
main engine starts up, you know, a much bigger engine and it just doesn't bother you. You know, you can hear the air going in to turn it over initially. And it just, it's not that bad, but oh, the auxiliary diesel generator on this particular ship, for some reason, whenever that, I do not know why to this day, but whenever that started off, it made a really, really high pitched whine. And it used to terrify me every single time it went off. It was like, it was like a really excited suitcase, only 14,079 times louder. It was just, you know, as if it's going on holiday. And it, oh, it just really, and you're, oh, that would be the oxygen generator then. And you're, you know, walking with your butt clenched, thinking, oh, I haven't pulled through, have I? Oh, not fun in the slightest. Anyway, nearly at the uh, Kim Carden Bridge to continue my uh, weather is better today, so I am going to say Merry. Actually, no. no, no, take it back, scratch that. No, it's not Merry. You know, I'm, I'm, on, I'm going to college. I'm, you know, leave my little, my little girl Ella. Yeah, that's my little girl and my wife Sheila. I'm leaving them at home, and I don't like it. So. No, oh, well, God. I literally dread. I mean, with my job, it's well, nowadays it seems to be so like three or four months at sea, and uh, then it's two or three months at home, respectively. And I am dreading my next trip away at sea because um, you know, it'll be my first period away from my little girl was only not much over three months old that's not going to be fun you know I, did. I found it bad enough just, just that initial bit of leaving so sort of your family behind so to speak when you're going to see and you know you're not going to see them I mean the worst the longest period I've had where I've been away and not been able to see my family is um, five and a half months so but you just lack of a better phrase, you just have to flip a switch and almost become emotionally distant so that you know you can survive you don't miss your friends and your family too much but this trip my next trip at sea after my college course yeah that's gonna be a hard one not looking forward to that so there you go get to know me a bit um, yeah Really not looking forward to that. But anyway, I will uh, tackle that when it comes. But right now, yes, I'm commuting to Glasgow every day, and I'm away for you know uh, with travel time slightly longer than your average typical working day, perhaps. But I mean, I leave the house nowadays at twenty half past six in the morning, um, just so I can get there in plenty of time. Because I mean, like yesterday. The traffic was terrible and it was a horrific drive through. I mean, it was like, you know, long delays on the M8 West after Junction 16 due to flooding. And I'm thinking, oh, wonderful, this is going to be fun. But yeah, it was a really long delay, sitting in traffic for ages. And um, so that was that. But anyway, that's us for today. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Have a good day.